today's tutorial will be a feral run cycle. I recorded a slow motion video of my dog running, so that is going to be my reference. It's always good to use a reference when you're doing a run cycle or any other animation really. It's very helpful to get a starting point to see what kind of poses you need to draw and what kind of motion you need to replicate. So with the run cycle, you're going to be starting with three main key poses. These are the three main key poses you're going to want to start with for a run cycle. One frame is going to be your character with their back legs on the ground and their torso and their front legs in the air kind of coming up. The second keyframe that you're going to want to draw is the character's front legs coming to the ground and the back legs are lifting up off the ground and their body is coming forwards. And the last keyframe you're going to draw is the character's legs coming together. The back legs are about to land on the ground. In this frame, the back kind of hunches up a bit. So that's going to be the way that you're going to start the run cycle with drawing those three poses to start. So once you've started out with those three key poses, you can draw the in-betweens from there. It's always helpful to draw a ground line so that the feet are always going to be touching the same place when they are on the ground. And the other back leg is going to kind of just lag behind the other one. And that's the same for the front legs as well. It's always a good trick to color code your limbs so that you can tell apart which are the front and the back ones when you're sketching it out and everything's kind of really messy. Helps keep you organized. Now you can start adding your in-between frames. As you add in-between frames, the animation is going to become a lot smoother. I think this is looking pretty good so far. Now that we've drawn out all the keyframes, I'm going to go ahead and add the tail. So for the tail, when the butt starts going up in the air, the base of the tail is going to kind of fall with the butt area, and the tip of the tail is going to kind of lag behind. Basically, the base of the tail is going to be pulled down by the butt area and the tip of the tail is kind of just floating behind it and being dragged. Kind of moves in sort of a ribbon-like or whip-like motion. I always like to start animating the tail by just drawing a single line for the tail and then adding the sort of flesh or mass of the tail on top of that. So like I said, the tail sort of drags behind and the base of the tail is going to be lifted up when the butt goes up and the tip is going to, is going to drag behind everything. Now we can go ahead and add the ears. So just think of them as they would be affected by the wind. They're kind of being dragged back when the head moves back. And the ear behind it is going to follow the same sort of motion. Now we're going to go ahead and add some hair. We're going to put this in a different color so it's a bit easier to see. So the head's going to move down and it's going to kind of drag the hair behind it. So just animate the hair as it's kind of dragging behind. It's going to kind of 
cover the face a little bit and then kind of pop up when the head is kind of coming upwards. And now we can start lining the animation. And it usually helps a bit to kind of add some shading to the limbs that are going to be farther away. So it's much easier to differentiate them and tell them apart. As you can see, it helps a lot distinguishing which legs are which. And I'm going to go ahead and animate the rough fluff. I usually animate this separately in a different color. I also animate this straight ahead. As with any secondary motion, it's going to drag behind everything. So as the head is pulled back, the fluff is kind of lagging behind it. It's going to be pushed forwards as it's coming in. And I'm going to go ahead and line the tail. I'm going to go ahead and color a more complex design in order to demonstrate how you would animate complex markings. So you're going to want to just color the first frame as you would any old drawing. There isn't really any specific advice I can give on animating complex markings. You just kind of have to follow each marking closely using the onion skin just to make sure that none of the markings are moving around funny. It's good to animate each marking kind of separately so that you can make sure that they're moving the way that it's supposed to. As you can see, I'm going to focus first on getting the back marking consistently shaped by just focusing on drawing that. So now I can make sure that the back marking is moving accordingly to the contours of the body in a natural way. And I'm going to go ahead and finish the coloring. It's pretty straightforward from here. Just coloring in each marking.
I'm going to animate the speckles on the back on a separate layer so that it's easier for me to see all the speckles using the onion skin. For animating spots like this, it's important to always use the same number of spots to keep everything consistent and really relying a lot on onion skin to make sure everything's moving right and staying consistent. And now I'm going to demonstrate a trick in Adobe Animate to make a shadow. Basically you're going to want to copy down all the layers, including your line art and coloring together, onto one layer. You're going to select all those layers and color them with, let's say, a black color that's at 50% opacity. You're going to select them all, flip them vertically, and move them into place. And now we've got a shadow. And now we're just about finished. So here's the finished product. I think this turned out pretty good. I hope that you guys found this helpful in some way. I'm going to be doing more tutorials like this. An anthro run cycle is coming next. I'm going to do walk cycles as well. I'm going to do stuff like tail motions, head turning. I'm going to do one on background panning. I'm open to suggestions on anything you might want to see. If there's anything you struggle with or want to see a tutorial on, leave me a comment. And I hope you guys found this helpful, and thanks for checking out this video, and have a good day.